Hi everyone, this is Matt Two Show with Intro Stats, and today I just wanted to uh, look at analyzing categorical data with um, software. So you know, uh, again, we're dealing, we're living in the age of big data. Uh, we really don't want to be counting things or calculating things by hand. We want computers to do sort of the heavy lifting for us so we can concentrate on trying to figure out what everything means and what it's telling us. Um, so, uh, so we're going to get started. So first thing I want to show you was my website. This is again uh, matt-2show.org. This is my website where you can find my videos and my free books and, um, and all kinds of things. So, um, so uh, let's take a look at the statistics page of the website. Just click there. And categorical data was uh, one of our topics in chapter one. So I'm going to click chapter one right here. All right. So um, you can kind of see if I kind of scroll down a little bit. We have some of some videos that you can link to to what to learn certain topics. Um, the, uh, these are the problems for section 1E are right here. Here's the problems for 1E, which was categorical data analysis. But today we're just going to look at trying to get, um, kind of analyze categorical data. So uh, some of the problems are going to ask you to open a data set. So usually you'll find those under data sets. So if we click there, data sets. And here's our data, lots of different data sets here. I'm going to look at the Math 140 Fall 2015 survey data. So this was a data taken from um, statistics students in the fall 2015 semester at uh, my college, College of the Canyons. Okay, so if I click on that, it's right there. Then I'm going to get, here's the data that, that would open up. Remember, categorical data is data where the data is made, usually made up of words, or it could be a number in place of a word, like this one, the month of your birthday. Really, this 8 really means August, and 11 means November. So the, even though these are numbers, I wouldn't treat this as quantitative numerical measurement data. I would treat this still as categorical data. Um, now, if I kind of look over here, and kind of, I'm just going to scroll. This is a pretty big data set, so we're going to scroll over, and you can kind of see where. Here's one that's kind of interesting. We asked the students, "What social media do you use the most?" This, of course, was in 2015. I'm sure that uh, it, things change over time. That is one thing we definitely learn in statistics: is that something that was true five years ago might not be true today. But anyway, let's take a look at this data a little bit. Now, one thing about interesting about dealing with categorical data or just any data in general is you never want to mess up somebody's original data, right? If you're working for a client and analyzing data, one of the things I always tell people is don't mess up their original data. So if you're going to do some, some, some kind of analysis or play with the data a little bit, you probably want to go ahead and copy and paste this into a new file. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, go to um, uh, File and New and just open up a new file. Now, if I want to, you could click on this, you know, like I click on it and drag it down. A lot of you are really good at dragging it down, but I will tell you in the age of big data where you may have a data set of 20,000 values, it is going to take you a long time to drag to the bottom of a, a data set that's 20,000 values. Uh, I really like this um, in, in Excel at least. They have a nice little feature. If you see if I hold my cursor above the column, you see how it turns into a downward arrow there. And if I just do one particular left click, just like that, it highlights the whole column of data even if there was 20,000 values. So it's much, much, I find it much easier than trying to uh, click and drag. All right, now if you, uh, if you want to copy something, you can right click and copy or control C. I'm a, I'm a, or, uh, I'm a big control C guy. So on PCs, it would be control, hold the control key down on your keyboard and then C. If it's a Mac, you'll push command, uh, command C. So, um, so if you notice that there's this, um, the, the, the column now has these dotted lines going around it, and that just means you've copied it. Now, if I go to the new Excel spreadsheet here, 
I'm just going to paste. So paste, you can right click and paste or you can do uh, control V. V is in victory. All right? And there we go, we got our whole data set. Now the one thing that is important when you're analyzing data in Excel is to realize the top is usually the title of the data. It's not actually one of the data values. So be very careful that first one is data, this data value. So if I, if I went down all the way to the bottom here, right, and if you notice, I probably have, I do have quite a few blanks. Right? I see you, you kind of see how there's a lot of people that just didn't answer the question. Sometimes we call that, we, we clean up the data or clean the data by um, kind of deleting out rows that have blanks in it. So that's not a, a bad thing to do if you're dealing with data. Um, but I'm going to show, what I'm going to show you today is uh, you can actually count these. If I wanted to count, um, I can sort of make uh, summary counts here. So if I, if I want to know, like here's, let's see, let's look at, we got Instagram. And we had uh, Snapchat, and we had Facebook, and looks like we had Twitter, and we had other, so any other social media that the students were using. Um, and let's suppose we kind of, if we look at this now, right now, I'm not going to count these by hand, how many people said Snapchat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, just highlight them. So if I, if I highlight this, now if you go to the home on, on Excel, you'll see this sort button, sort and filter. So sort and filter. And um, if you're dealing with more than just one column of data, usually you want to do a custom sort. But I just have one column of data that I want to sort, and I'm going to just click sort A to Z. And if you notice, what it did was it just put all these in alphabetical order. So now I have all the Facebook people together. What I like also in Excel is they do have a counter button. So if you, if you click on here and I just highlight all the people that said Facebook, there you go, right there. If you notice right here on the bottom it says count 75. So there were 75 people that said Facebook. So if I kind of go back up here next to Facebook I might do 75. And I can do this for the rest of them as well. So I could do, um, here's Instagram. Let's see how many people said Instagram. The nice part of this is it put the people that didn't answer at the very bottom. Seems like Instagram was quite a few. There, if I highlight all the Instagram people, it looks like the counter at the bottom of the page says 124. So we had 124 that said Instagram. 24 and so on right I can do this for the rest as well here's the other using some kind of other social media that they preferred again um, I didn't have to copy that by the way I don't know why I pushed copy uh, count was 27 though at the bottom so the count was 27 for other 27 And, okay, so now let's do look at Snapchat. Snapchat. Okay, there's Snapchat. Uh, and let's see, Snapchat, if I look at the counter at the bottom, it says 71. So Snapchat was 71. And let's see, the last one was uh, Twitter. Let's see what, what my count was for Twitter. Looks like I, I accidentally pushed copy and it tried to do a formula for me. Uh, let's see if I can uh, Let's see. 
and things happen sometimes. So let me just recopy it. Doesn't take but a minute. Again, I can go to um, Home and Sort and Sort A to Z. And again, I was just doing Twitter at the bottom, so let's do the Twitters. That's a good example though, you know, sometimes you'll hit something, click a button accidentally and the computer is not wanting to do what you want it to do. I tried doing control Z, which usually is undo, but it wasn't taking it. So I just recopied it. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't a big deal to fix. So it looks like here's my Twitter and I got, um, uh, looks like my count at the bottom was 31. Okay, so 31 for Twitter. Okay, so we have these, we can do counts if we want. Now this took a lot of time, and this is not what you really want to be doing, right? You want this to be done really quickly and efficiently. I want these counts um, really quick. So that's where we're going to move to a statistics software, right? So the first software I'm going to show you is um, StatKey, which is one of my favorite softwares on the market. You go to lock5stat.com, lock5stat.com. This is StatKey, it's a free program, works great on Macs and PCs. And you, when you get to the website, you just click on this button that says StatKey. Now, uh, we're dealing with one categorical data set, so right here under Descriptive Statistics and Graphs, I can click One Categorical Variable. So that's where you would click if you're trying to analyze one categorical data set. So I'm going to click on that. There we go. Now, if I go back to my Excel sp uh, spreadsheet, right, here's my, I'm going to copy that, my social media data. And I'm going to put it back into StatKey. So you usually go when you're copying data into StatKey, you usually just push the Edit Data button. So you can kind of see that they do have a, you could write, you could type, if you already knew the counts, you could type them in like this. But I, I find that most of the time when I use this program, I want, I want them to count it for me. I don't want to count it myself. So I'm going to go ahead and delete out the data that's